Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and we're back with the 101. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about another type of malware, one that really doesn't get the attention it deserves, botnets. Now this is another type of malware that's often misunderstood, all the way down to the terminology itself. So to get things kicked off, today we ask, what exactly is a botnet? All right, so before we get to our definition, let's clear up some terminology real quick. Though botnet is the term generally used to describe this type of malware, specifically speaking, the botnet refers to the network of infected machines hit by the botnet malware. And those infected machines? Well, they're the bots that make up the botnet. Still with me? Okay, good. Let's see that definition. A botnet is a network of endpoints infected by a single piece of malware that grants someone other than the owner of the machine total control over the resources, activities, and data of the entire group. So for the past couple of episodes now, we've been talking about how malware is generally made up of different modules, and that in some cases, an entire type of malware may be a module of a different type of malware. Well, one of the key modules used by botnets is a really big deal and deserves some airtime, command and control, or C2 for short. The idea behind C2 is nothing novel in itself. A group of bots in a botnet will at some point check in with a single centralized server or group of servers to receive commands, updates, and instructions on what to do. In fact, the idea of C2 is very commonplace across all types of malware, especially those used in a larger coordinated attack. But in the case of botnets, it's their defining module because it makes all of their malicious activities possible. The important thing to realize about a botnet is that its true power comes from the collective resources of all the endpoints that make it up. That's why the attack that's most often associated with botnets is called a distributed denial of service or DDoS. So you're probably familiar with how retail sites tend to bog down or sometimes don't even work when huge sales or big holidays come around. Well, much like that, botnets can be used to target public websites or other publicly facing systems to attack them by overloading them with requests. Simply put, the C2 issues a command to every bot in the network to target a particular IP over and over and over again hitting a very specific protocol in order to make that particular system unusable. Now, this attack is often associated with the idea of hacktivism, or the motivation behind certain criminal hackers to fight for a particular justice or cause. But in reality, the financial implications of this attack, coupled with the difficulties in defending against it, make it a powerful one for all types of criminal motivations. But another use of botnets that is often overlooked is the idea that the owner of the botnet, or herder, can treat their infected machines like, well, real estate. So imagine you own a huge apartment complex. You have lots of different rooms of all shapes and sizes, built for all sorts of different people's needs, and you can rent them out however you see fit. That's kind of how these botnets work. You see, these endpoints are managed by the botnet herder, but they're not used by them. Instead, they're leased out to other criminal groups and organizations to use for whatever their purposes are. Maybe they need email servers to set up a new spamming ring. Maybe they need to harvest credentials in the healthcare sector. Whatever the case may be, they can contact a botnet herder to get what they need, when they need it, without having to go through the work of infecting those machines as well. It makes their attack much more efficient and it makes a botnet herder a lot of money. So what did we learn today? Well, a botnet is a collection of infected machines all under control by a single piece of malware that can be used for a variety of purposes. The primary benefit of a botnet is the collective resources it contains, which is often why it's used by large scale DDoS attacks, but really can be used for any purpose that requires a lot of computing power. Though peer-to-peer -peer networks do exist, Botnets are generally structured with a C2 server acting as a centralized hub for instruction and updates, while all the individual bots check in periodically for their controls. This architecture lends itself greatly to a managed criminal service. Botnet herders lease their devices out to other criminal organizations to use for their own purposes, and they simply manage the bots themselves for profit. It just goes to show how mature, complex, and savvy the cyber black market has become. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and join us as we continue to answer endpoint security one question at a time. Of course, if you have questions, we want to hear about them. You can tweet us at carbonblack underscore inc and use the hashtag the 101 or just email us at the 101 at carbonblack.com. My name's Sean. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.